In lesson two, we're going to talk about one of the two main financial statements. There's three, but there's only two that you're going to learn in grade 11. It's the balance sheet. And to get sort of the big picture, let's take a minute and look at what actually is a balance sheet. So accountants, financial accounting, there's two different types, actually. Um, what you're learning in this course and all that you can learn in high school is financial accounting and financial accounting's goal is to report to the outsiders people that are not in the business management doesn't they don't use this stuff i mean they'll use numbers the accounting system makes but they don't use financial reports um as much as they use sort of internal management accounting reports right so financial accounting is about reporting to the public so people who lend companies money shareholders who invest in companies people who have no other way of knowing what the company is up to so it's sort of a, an accountability um piece financial accounting so these reports essentially tell three different things the three different reports and the two you learn in this course um are called the balance sheet, which we're going to start with first because it's based on the fundamental accounting equation. It makes the most sense to start with the balance sheet. And the other one is the income statement. And these have different names in different parts of the world um, using different accounting methods. But essentially, in this course, we're going to refer to them as the accounting statement, or sorry, the income statement and the balance sheet. And what they tell you is are two slightly different things. So the balance sheet contains your assets. So we throw assets on there, we throw on our liabilities, and we throw on equity. Right? And all the rest of our items, so our, mostly our revenues um, and our expenses, they go on the income statement. And as a result, because this is about how much money you make and the cost that you have, this tells you your profit. In other words, it measures financial performance. Whereas the balance sheet, where we start, this, because it has what you own, what you owe to others, and what you're worth, this is telling you the, um, your financial position. So in other words, what you've got is like a snapshot. That's usually the, the analogy. It's, a, it's sort of a, a picture in time, a snapshot, and a moment. Whereas an income statement covers a period of time. As obviously you can't measure performance if you don't know the time period it's, it's covering. So financial positions at a specific point in time. And it's telling you the position you're in. What you owe, what you own, and what you are worth. So... What we're going to do, we're in this section. Here's two practice exercises, and then I'm going to have you do one to make sure that, so that I know and you know that you're understanding how to make a balance sheet. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about what exactly goes on a balance sheet. How do we do this? And to do that, we're going to take, um, we're going to take our fundamental accounting equation, assets equals in this form, assets equals liabilities plus equity, and we're going to make this into an equation. Or a balance sheet. So this line down here is our is our. I'll, let me even make it a double underline. That's our equal sign. So on the left we have assets. On the right we have liabilities and equity. So if you think, what are some of the things that say maybe in your life might be things that you own, right? Well, well, you might actually have some cash in the bank or in your pocket, whatever. Um, what else could you have, right? Got some expensive headphones, right? Some Beats headphones going on or something. So it could be electronic stuff, and. You might also have um, various supplies, school supplies. Um, you might even be owed money from someone else. Right? Maybe your bro owes you some money. 20 bucks, right? You can, might, and, and, and you would have a dollar value to each of these, right? Electronics might be 200 bucks. Supplies, you might have 50 bucks of school supplies. Owed from your brother. Maybe you lent your brother $150, whatever. And you would total all of those up. And they might, that this equals, what is that? $350, $500. And on this side, if you didn't owe any money, you would be worth $500. But you might have a loan, um, sorry, a loan to, I don't know, of, uh, a friend how about that let's we'll say a loan to a friend for i don't know 250 dollars right which would mean if your assets that you own are worth 500 and you owe someone else 250 then your equity right your personal net worth would be the difference 250 and that is essentially what a balance sheet is telling you and this is called a simple balance sheet and it's laid out in the same format as the fundamental accounting equation um, up here, right? This whole thing up here. So let's try a more formal one. So here's some information um, to make a balance sheet. We've got, um, we don't have a name of a company, but we're just going to make one up. So a balance sheet, 
And you, you might want to take notes as I go through this. I mean, you can watch it through uh, the first time and then rewind it and watch it again as you take a couple of dot jots. But you should pay careful attention to the format because accountants can be kind of picky. All right. So in a balance sheet, because it's a specific point in time and it's a specific statement, one of the two financial statements, you have to specify things. And the first is the name of the company, which I haven't specified. So I'm just going to call this uh, name it after myself, the Mr. Bolton and, and Co. How about that? And the next thing you have to say is what it is. And it's a balance sheet. The next thing you have to do is you have to specify the specific point in time that these values were the values associated with the company for these specific things. And we're going to make this, as it says in the instructions right over here, this is for December 31st, 2017. So that's what we're going to put in. You cannot use abbreviations um, in financial statements because just in case somebody doesn't know what they mean. So abbreviations are no go. You have to use dollar signs unless you're planning um, to say something like this, which I usually do. Um, all values are in Canadian dollars. There. And then you don't have to worry about dollar sign format. You should, however, format your numbers to look like this. And negative signs in accounting um, are in brackets. And that format, all that formatting stuff in a Google Sheet can be found right here um, under the one, two, three icon, all these different formats. Um, which, which brings me to the next point is that accounting is not done by hand anymore. So everything we do is going to be done in a Google Sheet on spreadsheets for a variety of reasons. One, I just said one, accounting is not done by hand. It's done on computers. And second, if you are considering business post-secondary, um, one of the most important skills that you have the least ability with when you leave high school, generally speaking, uh, as high school students, is spreadsheets. Uh, they're everywhere, especially in business. So um, you're going to have to learn some of the, some of the, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, if you don't, though, know how to do it, eh, look for a couple tutorials or fire me some questions. But it's not too difficult. Most of these sort of lesson videos, you're going to see the tricks that you need to get through the course. It's, it's not too tricky. So the next thing we do is we, we, we give a title. And you'll see that this is already pre-made to save some time making the video. But if it isn't an account, and these items are called accounts, and I'll explain sort of what each one represents, but they're all accounts. If it isn't an account, it has to look different than everything else around it. So this is bolded because it's not an account, it's a title. It's the left side of our equation, right? It's assets. So the next thing you have to realize is that our assets are listed in a particular order because the way in which they are ordered tells us information about them. The most liquid assets, which means the assets closest to cash come first. Cash is already cash, clearly, so it comes first. So we would list cash and we would list the amount. And again, if this was in, say, you typed it in and it looked like this, right? And you needed 11,500, you would simply go up to the number format and you would change it to accounting, except it's got a, a numerical symbol in it. You can just use actually this one, financial, like that. The next item has to be the closest to cash and that is going to be something that is called accounts receivable and this is easy to remember by the second word it is something you are waiting to receive in other words somebody owes you money and all of your accounts from all of your customers or anybody else for that matter that owes you money are called your accounts receivable and this in this case is ten thousand dollars right so it's an asset it's something owed to you it's a, a legal right to be paid that you own, so it's an asset. And accounts receivable are supposed to be paid in 30 days, so that's pretty close to cash, so you list it next. Generally speaking, this is a pretty, this balance sheet is pretty standard um, for grade 11, so these are the accounts that you sort of, you're going to encounter most frequently. So the next sort of short-term asset would be supply. So we got it right at the bottom, and it's $1,900. After that, we're into longer term assets. There's nothing really short term. And the difference between short term and long term is long term assets should be hanging out in the business for over a year and used to generate revenue. So they're the assets you use, like your machinery, your delivery vehicles, or land or building and equipment, that sort of stuff. And they are listed differently. These short term ones are listed by liquidity, but the longer term ones are listed in terms of longevity. So the longest lasting assets are listed first. And that, of course, would be land. 
and that's listed for 35,000. The next one is gonna be building, and it would be $60,000 cost when we bought it. The last one, the last asset we have is equipment. And of the long term, it would last probably the least amount of time. This is a pretty standard list. So this would be the order most of the time. All right. You can see that cell is not formatted properly. So I'm going to change it to financial and we're done. <coughs> Excuse me. The next thing we have to do is the right side of the equation, which in this case would be liabilities. Liabilities. Liabilities, we have a couple. We got a bank loan. We have, just like accounts receivable, these are the accounts that we owe, so payable, that we owe money to. So our suppliers. And then we have a mortgage, which is longer term. These are listed uh, in terms of, the first ones you list are the ones you have to pay first, pay off in full first. So the first one would be accounts payable. Both these accounts, these are called trade accounts. So your accounts receivable and accounts payable usually have terms of 30 days. They need to be paid in 30 days. So our accounts payable will be listed first because that's um, due first. And that is, what was that? Um, $25.50. The next thing is probably a bank loan. Um, they're usually only for a couple of years. Uh, it, it depends, the mortgage could be almost done, but usually mortgage is many years and a bank loan is just a couple. So you'd list the bank loan next usually, uh, and it's 9,500. And the mortgage then of liabilities would be last, and it's 40,000. So, we're at the point now where we need to talk about these lines. So in accounting, a straight line means you are adding up, so including in a calculation, everything above that line up to the last line. So this line means there's going to be a total after it that will include all the values above it up to the last line. And there is no other line. So it's going to sum all these values. And in a spreadsheet, the quick way to add a bunch of numbers is click equals. You start all equations with an equal sign. And then you go sum. And you would then just highlight the values that you want to add together, which are going to be all of these. You can highlight with your mouse, or you can use the arrow keys and the shift button, whatever, and it's going to total it for you. And we get $138,400. And again, you need to put a label, total assets. And notice how total assets and assets are bolded and look different than regular account titles. Same over here. This looks different than regular account items. Now we have more than one here, so we total each section. We total assets, and once we get farther into the course, we're gonna, we're gonna break these into shorter term and longer term and total each of those two, but right now we don't. This we're gonna total, it's gonna be total liabilities. Notice there's no short forms, and that would be again, sum this, 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 and this for 52,050. And then we need a space, because the next section is equity, oops. And once we have the equity title in, the name usually of the account, because you have more than one. So if you have a partnership, you'll have a cap, what's called a capital account for each owner. So we're going to say, I'm the owner. So here's me, and here's my capital account. And capital, if you remember, this is an equation. So total assets minus total liabilities will be the equity. And you're not given that, but you can find it. It's total assets minus total liabilities owing, and that's going to equal 86350 Okay. Again, notice here another line because up to this line. So we're going to take this and add it with that and put it here. So now we have total, total liabilities. So this side, right? We're adding this and this. So the liabilities and the equity. Total liabilities and equity. We go equals. We take this. We add it to this number and we get the total. Notice how a couple of things. First, they're on the same line. They need to be on the same line. So whichever side is shorter, you need to bring down the total so that it's on the same line as the other side. Second, if they are not the same number, you did it wrong, right? It's an equation. So it has to balance. This is the left side of the equation, and this is the right side. So they need to be the same number. That's why it's called a balance sheet. So that's pretty much it. Um, all you need to do now is take a couple stab, take a stab at a couple of them. You can see them right here. There's exercise five and six, and if you feel really confident, you can uh, um, ask me for exercise eight. But eventually, I'm going to share that with everybody, and uh, we'll see how we're doing, and then we'll move on. Eventually, we're going to get down here to transaction analysis, where we start to change the values of these accounts as transactions happen.